Hello, 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 people of the world of the Come Up Universe. It's me, Nick, and this is. This is how I want to be touched. You have to ask first. I have to say yes. As if I am well water that has been carried many miles for you. As if all us black folk flew away laughing instead of getting on the boats that day. Please welcome to the Come Up Mackenzie Chin. Wow. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I think I'm as well as anybody can be right now. Big, dark, bright features. Um, let's talk about that title, first of all. What does, what does that title mean to y'all? Yeah, um, you know, I was the one to kind of pitch that as our title. And when I was, when I was like thinking about all of the work that we had made that was going to constitute this album, it was feeling very, um, you know, okay, let me backtrack. I think in moments like these, especially when we're talking a lot about race and injustice, white people are always asking black people for hope. They're like, what, well, how, what, what, how, why should we be hopeful? What can give us hope? And I'm like, you know, like, I don't know that people deserve hope right now. Like, I feel like, I feel like that shouldn't be on me. Like y'all need to do some work. Um, and, and so when I was looking at this album, it felt, I don't know, it just, it felt of the moment, but it also felt, it felt like something distant. It felt like something on the horizon, uh, but also very nebulous. And so, you know, I, I don't like in my work taking shortcuts to, uh, to like to hope right to the place where we want to be to the place that we deserve like i think that we should do the work uh and so because we're in the midst of that work um it's hard to know what the outcome is going to be i hope that it's bright and i believe that if we actually put in the work we can get to that place of light and brightness um but i think we have to go through some through some darkness first we have to do the shadow work and so i think this album uh for us like really encompasses that this album is the work oh see listen she wasn't even trying to be a poet but she just was did y'all hear that <laughs> she said i just wrote down some key phrases she said there are no shortcuts to hope or we're tired of shortcuts of hope yes period blanket statement um shadow work like I, like all these the work, like, and, and the idea of that work being in the shadows, that work not being something that you are applauded for, that work not being something that you that needs to be celebrated, but it's just the work that's always there because that is how it exists. As a society, there's some of us who are really game to undertake that work, and some who are really resisting, and it's creating it's creating the tension and the conflict that we're that we're experiencing. And I keep finding myself coming back to the phrase like we're navigating like some necessary rubble, right? Like it's uncomfortable and it's scary. But like, given the history of the of the nation that we live in of America, like we are gonna have to go through it in order to come out on any kind of um, uh, to come out on any kind of shore in order to like realize the world that we're all deserving of. Like we're gonna have to go through it first. There's no way around that. What was Growing Concerns Poetry Collective born out of? Um, I have to give credit to Michael DeVille, um, who is a hip hop artist uh, here in Chicago, an actor, uh, curator, and also my partner, like full disclosure, like he's, uh, he and I have been together since 2017. Um, but the, the collective came first. Um, Michael was looking for a way to you know, he had been doing hip hop for a while, but he had all of this kind of like free form poetry that he wanted to find a way to give life to and expression to. And so he got together with Jeff, uh, Jeff, Jeffrey Michael Austin, who's the musician for our group, um, just to kind of like create sound and um, and some original beats for some of Michael's poetic work. And so they were performing for a, a very little while, but Michael was like, this doesn't feel complete. This just feels like two dudes being artsy. And I feel like this isn't quite. This ain't it. Um, so Michael and I, we had known one another for uh, for for some time. We had met doing doing a uh, kids play back in I think 2012 or 2011, 2012. Man, them kids uh, plays. Had, the kids play will get you caught up. Them 
kids plays. They don't know what's happening backstage. Um, they don't. They anyway. have no idea. He and I both like really started to evolve and expand beyond just our work as actors. And we had both, it turns out, been like really like focusing on writing and poetry specifically. And so one day, you know, he invited me to a rehearsal with him and Jeff. And then at the end of the rehearsal, Michael was just like, this is great. We're a collective. And I was like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> I thought this was just, I thought we were just going to do the one show. Um, so we did the show and immediately after that, it was a so, a so Far Sounds. And um, so those are like very small, intimate performances in unusual performance spaces. Like it might be uh, like a workspace or somebody's apartment. It's just like really the focus is on the musicians and not on just like the scene, you know? So we did that show and then they immediately invited us to do another show, like a like a video like recording of you know another show, and so at the time I was like I don't know if anybody's gonna like this other than us. Like who wants to listen to like some poems and some music? That's some artsy. Like I dig it, but I really did not know if anybody else was gonna vibe with it. Um, but the response that we got in that room was so much stronger than I could ever anticipate. Mm -hmm. And then we played the second show and the same thing happened. What do you think is that special sauce? Like, what's the thing that you think made people be attracted and want to keep hearing work from you all? I think all three of us are like really good at what we do. Um, and that, or at least that what we are doing is resonating with people. Um, each of those threads independently resonate and are strong. And I think together they become that much stronger. Like Jeff is such a perceptive, sensitive, responsive, thoughtful musician. It's really quite, it takes my breath away every time I listen to one of his compositions. And he's able to be so in tune with what Michael and I are doing. And he has like literally no ego involved when it comes to like his work. He just like, he's an amazing listener, you know? Um, Michael is a, is a remarkable lyricist. Like I know I'm biased. Like I know, you know, he's he's my, my partner, he's my boyfriend. But like, uh, like I wouldn't lie to you about it. Like right. if, 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 the, if the shit wasn't, if the shit wasn't popping, I would be like, he's, really, he's a great you know, person. I love but his look, enthusiasm. This is... <laughs> no, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> I tell him all the time, I'm like, wow, it's amazing that you never sacrifice content for flow or vice versa. Like you're always saying something very potent and very specific and also like keeping this rhythm that is just, like incredibly hard to do. It really amazes me. And like personally, I mean, I, I'm always striving to grow in my craft and to become stronger. But I think there, are, I think I do have like a handful of moments where I feel like I really do happen upon some truth that I'm able to communicate in a really incisive way. And so I think all those three things together are for the people whose whose hearts are open to it. It will automatically. Um, I think it'll automatically resonate. And I think the other element of that is that we're always just telling the truth. Like there's, we're, it's not just that, it's like we're also sincere and vulnerable. And in the world today, I think that's a really, um, that's a scarce commodity. Like we're not socialized to be vulnerable. And sincerity is also hard to come by because there's just seems like there's so much at stake and we constantly have to protect ourselves. So I think when people come across that sincerity and that truthful, that honesty, it's disarming. It's not enough to just like sing song or to write a poem because you're good at writing poems. You have to have something to say and there needs to be a reason why you have to say it right now. Like whenever I'm like watching a play or a movie or just any kind of story, any kind of piece of art, I always ask myself, why this and why now, right? Because like, like there's there's a lot of very talented people out there, all vying for your attention, all vying for your clicks. But I think art is valid and worth while in and of itself, right? Like I just, it's one of the things that enriches our lives as human beings. But I think it's the next level when our art has a, like a, a, a sharpened point, mm. right? Like when we like sharpen the edge of the knife so that it actually can, can, can have an impact on people. Mm -hmm.